Hey everyone! Today on the Plastic Canvas we're painting the mutant zombie from Run Fighter Die Reloaded by Grey Fox Games. Hey everyone, Matt here from the Plastic Canvas and welcome to episode 3 of this Run, Fight or Die Reloaded series and today we are painting the big baddie, the mutant zombie. Now I'm going to get straight into talking about what I'm doing here because as you'll have seen just then, um, he already had a layer down for his base code at the start of the video. That's because somehow, I don't know, moving files around, something like that, I lost the footage of the prime that I put down and that first uh, part of the base code. So I'm just going to talk to catch up to the point we're up to and then we'll keep on moving from there. So the first thing that I started with was a Xenothal Prime. Now normally when I do a Xenothal Prime, it's so that when I come to doing my highlighting and shading down the track, I have a reference to refer back to for where my brightest highlights and my darkest shades, shades sorry, should be. In this case though, because I knew I was going to be using my airbrush to lay down the skin and that the airbrush just naturally puts paint down thinner than a brush, I knew the tones from the Prime would come through. So I used the Xenothal Prime as some pre-shading so that when I then put that skin tone down, uh, it was brighter on top and darker on the bottom just to act as some pre-shading so that when I do come to this stage here, which I'm at at the moment, of doing the, the shading, uh, I already had that, um, those tones coming through. Um, but once I'd done that, I then laid down the skin tone. Now, I wasn't actually happy with the first skin tone that I put down because I mixed green and brown and yellow together. It was really far towards the brown side. Um, I laid that first skin tone down just before I did all of those, the, the smaller figures that are in episode two because I had the airbrush out for the priming anyway, so I thought I might as well do it. But then I went and then painted all of them and then came back to this guy. And what I found when painting the, the smaller minis is that the skin tone that I did there was more towards the green and the yellow side. And I liked that a lot more than the, the brown side that I had this guy originally on because t having more brown in it, it was more of that realistic look, I suppose, um, if zombies were real. But because this is a more of a fun, lighthearted, just dice chucking zombie survival game, the more green and yellow brighter tones reflected the feel of the game a little bit more. And so I liked that a bit more. So then um, the first thing that you saw in this video was then me doing that second skin um, coat where I uh, replaced the original brown that I had in the mix with a skin tone, which I still, I suppose is kind of a, a light brown anyway, but I mixed in a lot more of the green and the yellow and yes, less of the skin tone. And then I arrived at a tone that I was, I was really, really happy with. The problem though is that it did, because it was then two coats of the skin, it did lose the, um, the Xenothal Prime coming through the tones from that, but I figured I'd rather be happy with the tone that I have and get nothing from the Xenothal Prime than get the pre-shading from the Prime but not be happy with the skin. So anyway, that's how we sort of got to the point where, where the video started. Now I'm highlighting the skin here and obviously I did the shading before the highlighting, but this is a really good example of why when I first started painting, I didn't mix any colors. If something was going to be blue, I just used the blue that I had. If something was going to be red, I just used the red that I had. I didn't mix colors to mix up a new one. And the reason for that was that when it came to highlighting and shading, it was really, really easy to get the highlight and shade color because I was able to go back to the base coat that I used really, really easily because I had it in a bottle. Whereas here where I've mixed up the, um, the skin tone, I mean, I didn't have a zombie skin tone, so I needed to mix one, mix one up. 
this is where I have a lot more trouble. And this is definitely not one of my strengths in my painting is being able to look at a color and then be able to mix up one that is then going to match as a, as a highlight or a shade. So, um, yeah, so back when I first started painting, didn't mix at all, um, just to make it easier. But then, yeah, you get into cases like this where you do need to mix up a custom colour. Um, and I did have a little bit of trouble initially getting the colour right that I mixed up for the shade. Because what I did was I went back to the base colour, which as I said, said was mostly green and yellow with a bit of the skin tone in. And because that skin tone is kind of brown anyway, I thought, well, if I just mix in a darker brown, that should work as the shadow colour. Yeah, it, it really didn't. Um, all it did is it shifted it from the skin tone that I had towards brown. And the shadow of the skin tone that I had, which is a lot of green and yellow, is not just going to be brown, it's going to be a darker colour of that. And this is the part that I have trouble with, is lightening and darkening a colour without actually changing it. So what I ended up doing was, as I mixed in some more of the um, some more of the brown to darken the colour, I balanced that by uh, adding more and more of the green that I used in the base coat, and I actually found that that worked. So because that kept it on the green side, so the the green kept it on the green side, the brown darkened it. Balancing those two together as I, as I mixed them in gave me the um, the shading colour that I was happy with. Now someone that's got better colour theory knowledge than me and is just better at mixing colours will tell you all of the things that are wrong with that and I have no doubt that that wasn't the right way to go about it. But it is it is an area of painting that I struggle with and I managed to find a way so I was happy with the, the tone that I got in the end. But yeah, the, the first step in mixing that up what wasn't right at all. Um, so once I had the tone that I was happy with, then it was just my usual process for shading. So thin that paint right, right down, um, and then just did some layering. So because the paint was so thin, it only made a little bit of a difference every single time I put a layer down. So I just started in those deepest recesses in there, laid that uh, shading tone down, and then just feathered the edges out so I got a bit of a blend and then came back when it was dry, did another layer, but when I feathered it the second time, just didn't feather it as far um, and then just followed that same process for each subsequent layer so that it built up the intensity of the shadow um, where I was laying it down and then blended out towards nothing as I was feathering less and less and less. And then what I did, because I wanted to um, really push the contrast right in the bottom of those um, contours, like in the muscles and all that, um, I then mixed in some black for the final bit of the shading. And then just with my, uh, my thinnest brush, I just laid just a line of that almost black um, color that I mixed up right into the bottom of the each of those recesses just to really boost the contrast. Um, and then when I came to do the highlighting, it was just the exact same process. So I um, mixed that base coat back up for, from the skin, put some white in there just to lighten it off, thin the paint down, and then just layered it up on the all of the muscles um, and just, yeah, follow that exact same process, put the paint down where the light would be hitting, feathered the edges out, and then the next layer, put it in the, exact, in the exact same spot at the top of each of those muscles, but just didn't feather it out quite as far and that just gradually built up the intensity.
All right, so here I lay down a sepia wash on the bandages and his shirt there, mainly because I wanted to create a differentiation between the bones that are sticking out of his skin all over the place and what he's wearing. Um, I didn't actually like it on his shirt here. I liked it on the, the bandages because it sort of dirtied them up and I brought out the details that are in there that you couldn't see just from that bone color that I had. And it was a much, much easier way of shading it than trying to, you know, sort of do it with, um, you know, mixing up a brown or something like that and then just doing the line work myself. I didn't like it with the shirt though because um, it just, it made it too dark. All I really wanted to do was kind of make his shirt just look dirty. Um, so yeah, I don't leave it like this. Oh, here we go. As I'm um, painting over it right now. Um, what I do though is I paint it up to look as though more deliberately, like it has dirty patches on it. I can't remember how far from here the, the step actually is. So now I'm highlighting the hair. Um, so with the, the shirt, I um, I start with a, with a sepia wash and I just put little sort of blobs of it kind of here and there. I mean, it is sort of thought about where they go, but I just put little, little blobs of it here and there, quite thin um, and let that dry. And then I put some more wash over the top of that, but sort of starting from kind of the middle of the blob and working out towards the edge so that then there is a darker patch kind of in the middle, then out towards the edge. And then I finish it with a Agrax, um, just again, right sort of where, so they're kind of painted to look like stains. And so just doing it where the, um, the middle of the stain kind of is just to give it that really sort of dirty look in the middle and then it feathers out to um out sort of nothing at the edge um but yeah so in the the artwork the shirt is just white but because i yeah i wanted that clear differentiation between so i wanted the bones to really really stick out um <laughs> literally um but yeah i wanted it to be obvious where the bones were and so i didn't want to have the shirt white and the bones white and so the bones would kind of get lost a little bit in there so yeah i made that really really light brown color painted over that but yeah that that wash just made it too dark so yeah so that's why i go down that sort of road of um yeah making it uh um looking like there's stains in it um and i was really really happy with the, the look that that gave in the end it sort of gave it that um um kind of effect of what a stain actually is, where it's not necessarily all the same colour, um, because it will sort of, you know, like hit the material and then spread out a little bit, and so it's darker in the middle than what it is out towards the edges. So yeah, so I just kind of tried to think about where the, um, you know, where it would be its most dirty, so along the, the bottom edges and things like that, and yeah, so that was a, that was a good little effect that, that I was really, really happy with. But um, I'm sort of mentioning that to kind of talk about um, the degree to which you actually paint a mini. Um, I find it myself really, really easy to go over the top in terms of time, um, and the end result that you get isn't really worth the actual mini itself, and it's sitting on the board. You know, you might play a game once every couple of weeks or something like that. Is it worth going to, or what level of effort is it worth going to um, before you know you're, you're doing too much? With this guy, I had a particular standard in mind that I was going to paint him to. Because if you haven't played this game, he is basically just a, a figure that sits off to the side just to mark the mutant zombie as he awakens. He doesn't come onto your player board or anything like that. He just sits off to the side. Um, and so, yeah, I wasn't going to do too much with him. Because I started painting him before we played the game then played the game, really, really enjoyed the game. And then I thought, well, if I really, really liked it, it's then worth putting a bit of extra effort in. Here I'm starting to do the, the stain, so you can sort of see what I'm talking about by um, doing it in, you know, over several layers. Anyway, so once yeah, I worked out that I really, really liked the game, I then thought, well, it's actually worth putting a bit of time, a bit more time into this guy than what I was going to, because it's going to get to the table more. But with the way this guy works in the game, he just sits there. Um, he's actually going to be noticed, and any you know effort that I put into painting him is sort of going to be worth it because people are actually going to be looking at it 
you know, throughout the game. So something like this, you know, um, so painting, you know, his shirt to look like it's dirty, um, the, the rust effect that I do on the pole of the stop sign, just things like that that I wasn't going to originally do. I ended up deciding to do it because I figured, yeah, this is a game that we like. It's going to get to the table a lot. It's pretty quick to play. So, um, yeah, we will see it a lot. Um, and just the way that it sits there on the table, seen right through the game, I just figured it was worth it. But yeah, it was it was just something that I, I was thinking about in terms of how much effort is worth putting into a mini. Um, and yeah, I think it really does come down to how much you enjoy the game and how much the paint job is actually, um, how, how much the impact of the paint job is going to come through. And I think it's warranted painting this guy up a little bit more um, because yeah, it, it, it will be seen and we will get it to the table quite a bit. So um, yeah, I, I was happy to put that extra effort in on over what I was originally going to do, um, just because yeah, this is a game that we, we do enjoy. Alright, now just in case it doesn't come up super well and you can't quite tell exactly what I'm doing here, I'm just painting this to look like there's been some scrapes across this stop sign and some of the paint's been worn off down to that bare steel. So I first did this effect on the mechs in Scythe. There's a couple of videos up where you can see that and it's a little bit more obvious what I'm doing here. But all I did was I started with black um, just to lay down a base for the uh, that um, blade steel paint to sit on. And so I just painted some, some scratch sort of lines just to make it yeah, look like something had scraped across it. And then by painting the blade steel over the top, it just looked like that the, the paint had been worn down to nothing. It was just an extra effect to, to go with because I figured it wouldn't still be in its, you know, old brand new bright condition. Um, it will have copped some, some knocks along the way. Um, now also just quickly to mention here, because I don't think you can quite tell from the, from the angle, but at first I did a, a dry brush with the, the dry, um, the, sorry, the riser rust there for that initial rust effect. Now with my um, brush there, I'm just using the tip to just kind of stipple in some more exact um, rust effects that will stand out a little bit more. So all I did there was I just um, sort of dabbled it on or stippled it on here and there. And then we'll just slightly um, um, put some water onto the bristles and then just feathered it out a little bit so there are some brighter spots than just where I, where I dry brushed it. And this blood going on here is another one of the parts that I wouldn't have put as much effort into um, initially until after I found out how much we enjoyed the game. I did sort of try and think a little bit about where this blood goes. So I blooded up the bandages a bit like it's all seeping through there around the edge of the bones to show that they've sort of come through the skin um, and it goes sort of down over his chest like he's just sort of recently had a, had a feed. Um, but yeah, so this is the, the last step. So the mutant zombie is done after this. So thank you very, very much for spending some time watching me paint another mini. I really, really hope you've enjoyed it and gotten something out of it. Um, and as always, uh, please do leave a comment down below, um, something that you liked about the video and something that you think can be improved, especially if you're a new watcher. I have had quite a lot of new um, subscribers recently, so hopefully there's a few more people, a few new people, sorry, watching this. So yeah, please do um, leave a comment down below um, so that I can use that as some feedback to make these videos as good as possible. Um, Please stop by the Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram accounts that I've set up for this channel, especially Instagram. That's where I'm my most active, um, posting pictures there fairly regularly of what I'm working on so that you can sort of see what's going to be coming up in the near future. Um, so we, oh yeah, and also please do um, like and subscribe to keep up to date with these videos as they keep coming out. So with all that being said, this is Matt from The Plastic Canvas signing out. Happy painting, everyone. Cheers.